Thanks for the introduction. Um, I'll be talking about free and open source software for large data set geostatistics. Um, and I'll start by motivating why this is different from uh, small data set geostatistics. I'll introduce some new software uh, I'm developing for calculating diagrams for large data sets. Uh, talk through some existing software for model fitting and my analysis of it, and then I'll conclude. So first, why is large data set geostatistics different? Well, so we're doing geostatistics because, in the top of those words, everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. Um, so the standard approach to doing this sort of problem is to uh, examine how the correlation between different points varies with distance. So if we have this data set on the left where uh, we have some spatial position, say, um, and some variable y that we're measuring, we can see, uh, we can try to estimate forget why, what is the expected variance between two positions of given distance part as a function of that distance. And so we can estimate that using this empirical semi diagram on the right. Uh, having done that, we can uh, use this to understand or to constrain a covariance matrix, and we can use that covariance matrix to uh, fit a model for the data. That done, you can then predict the uh, value at new lo uh, locations by the um, so what's the issue? Well, so data sets are growing increasingly large. So here, for instance, you can see very well in the size, but OpenStreetMap uh, has five times as many nodes in its data set as it did 10 years ago. Um, and in calculating uh, that covariance matrix, or calculating the variogram, you need to consider the distances between uh, different pairs of points. Uh, so the number of distances you're calculating is then 25 times as large as it was 10 years ago, um, which means a large RAM requirement. And then it's even worse to decompose that covariance matrix in order to fit the model. You need um, over 125 times more um, floating point operations. Uh, so that's just unfeasible. Um, so how do you sort this? Well, this being statistics, uh, we're going to look at sampling. Uh, and there's, there's two risks when you're taking these subsamples. So uh, if you just take random points from within the database uh, for a given uh, covariance structure, then you can end up with points that are too far uh, apart for them to be very highly spatially correlated. So if uh, the tops are uh, variation of that uh, variability with distance, um, then the gold points aren't going to be very highly spatially correlated, and as a result, uh, you don't have very good constraints on um, that correlation. Uh, because the points are so far apart, the, the correlation is not very important, and so there's massive computational efficiency by considering these pairs and the distances between them. On the other hand, if you take a spatial uh, subset as a sample, uh, then these points are very highly spatially correlated, uh, which dominates the variability. So, constantly, you don't know very much about how the variation of covariates with space um, affects the value of the data point. Um, and effectively, because these points are very highly interrelated, uh, you have a significant computational efficiency from considering all of them. Um, so what do you do? Well, so those two forms of inefficiency compute ways that you can have efficient calculation. Um, so if you have some idea of the length scale over which these uh, properties are correlated, you can split the data set into boxes uh, with twice that correlation length per side and which overlap. And then every data point uh, has significant interactions only with other data points which share a box. So if you're looking at that right highlighted data point, um, it's related significantly only to data, other data points within the uh, grey circle, and those are either share the golden box on top with it or the blue box in the middle with it. Once you've done this, you can further subsample the database. If points are very highly clustered in certain uh, of these boxes, then you don't need to consider all of them because they're so highly related. So we, we can sample a number of pairs of points, which is proportional to the number of data points. Um, this is the first approximation to the optimum uh, way of reweighting these data points, which is such a value value in government, and it can save a large number of comparisons. Um, just listed at the bottom. Uh, so, 
This uh, is implemented in a very um, calculation algorithm, which I'm developing in R. Uh, so that supports both Euclidean distances and distances on WS84 standard ellipsoid. Um, and you have two options for subsampling data points. You can either uh, include all data points, but only a subset of the connections between them, as on the left. Um, and that means that you might have good coverage over the data set. Or you can include a subset of data points that include all of the connections between them. And this means that you're creating valid uh, covariables. <laughs> Um, and then within this variogram implementation, uh, there's also um, implementations of uh, the standard calculation of Matterhorn 1962 and two robust approaches to uh, approximating by Creston Hawkins and by Canton. Uh, so I've applied this to an 80,000 data points uh, data set on groundwater levels in the Punjab. Um, so rather than taking uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, which would be required if I were uh, doing the, uh, comparing all pairs of data points, um, uh, I can analyze only 1.6 million interacting pairs. It's in R, so it's still not uh, amazingly fast, but it takes about an hour, and you can create this lovely program on the right. Um, so that's program calculation and neighborhood identification. Uh, what about fitting the model? Well, so lots of libraries exist for this, uh, open source, um, and, we can, and they use one of the two approaches uh, related to the sampling. So either you have no correlation at a distance, and, and so you can take advantage of that by tapering your covariance matrices, um, uh, or even by considering only the nearest neighbors of points in doing, calculating this uh, statistical model. Um, and updating your Bayesian prior. Or you can take advantage of high correlation locally, so you can um, represent all of the data points by a basis of a uh, much smaller degree, um, by doing something like fixed rank Krieging. Um, or in a predictive process, you represent all of the data points by a smaller number of knots um, and fit the model to those. Or, in fact, you can use both uh, approaches for efficiency in something like a multi-resolution approximation, as is implemented in the Julia package, MRI, JSON. Um, uh, other approaches uh, solve an equivalent problem, but in a form that has higher sparsity. So uh, lattice creeding does creeding on a grid in which, because uh, uh, the system is um, uh, homogeneous with with position um, and invariant position, then uh, the precision matrix ends up being sparse. Or you can use the integrated nested Laplacian approximation um, to solve the stochastic um, stochastic partial differential equation, which is equivalent using the R package in the, um, And Catherine's looking a bit into how in is doing that, uh, as well as some other things. Uh, I'll be looking at the first ones. There's not many comparisons between these different approaches, um, so I decided to have a look myself. So to do that, we simulate points uh, which are located in the unit square, a mixture of clusters and the uniform distribution to have a, a data set which displays some of the features of real data sets where uh, sampling efficiency um, can be improved. Uh, I have covariates, I have a very simple exponential correlation structure, um, and I try to estimate the coefficients um, that generate this process using a linear model without any spatial correlation, using the standard approach with a dense covariance matrix, um, with sparse uh, spherically tapered covariance matrix, and uh, with a nearest neighbor's Gaussian uh, process uh, using various R libraries. Um, for each of the latter two, I either specify the correlation structure within a maximum likelihood fit of the model, or using the empirical semi-variogram beforehand. So what are the results? Uh, so here we have plots of uh, the amount of time taken to run uh, this model fit on top left, uh, the peak usage of RAM during that fitting. Uh, bottom left, it's the root mean squared error in the coefficients. Uh, and on the uh, bottom right, it's the likelihood of seeing the two data um, under the fitted model result. So um, taking into account how what the model uh, output thinks are the two coefficients, and also what the fitting uncertainty about those coefficients are. 
Uh, so you can see, for instance, uh, fixing a simple linear model LN is very cheap computationally, um, uh, but doesn't take a, uh, advantage of the larger data set to reduce root mean error, and uh, has catastrophic uh, likelihood because um, it's assuming the data points aren't correlated, uh, and so it uh, is overly certain about what the model coefficients are and, and is incorrect. Um, in comparison, the standard uh, geostatistical approach of SBM and DENTS uh, computationally quite expensive and has, has very bad scaling of runtime with number of data points, um, uh, but very accurate. Uh, you can see that actually improvements, so sparse uh, a calculation, calculation of a sparse type of matrix with a variogram and the spatial nearest names approach um, are pretty accurate. Um, and the, but the best one time is by using a, a spatial nearest neighbors approach with a variogram p calculated. Um, and the best RAM is by using a spatial nearest neighbors approach because uh, in the process it, it doesn't ever uh, consider all nearest neighbors, it just does it sequentially. Um, so I've applied this to a data set in the Punjab of Pakistan where we have uh, 42,000 records, lots of covariates. Um, and this calculates in a few hours uh, a model fit. Um, which is physically reasonable. So conclusions. Um, so we really need computationally efficient methods for large data set geostatistics. Thankfully, lots of them are available um, through open source software packages, especially in R. Um, the new tool under development is very promising for calculating empirical semi variograms. Um, and then for model fitting and prediction, uh, spectral nearest neighbors, guessing processes were, were the most efficient tool um, that I found. So, future work, so I'm um, in the process of rewriting the variogram calculation code as a production standard code. Um, so I'd be really interested in which languages that would be most useful in at the moment. It's um, in R with a tidy diverse idiom, but uh, obviously there's lots of scope to improve that and make it useful to people. Um, it's test for a few more additional existing methods, uh, so the um, fixed rank Kriegian, for instance, um, and then it's important that I'm modeling data sets which have the same sort of complicated process as real data sets so that I know that these tools might work in the real world. Um, and I'd like to extend these tests to uh, creating and predicting new data sets. And, and for that, uh, geostatistical approaches uh, are out there, but there's also, for prediction, a whole range of other methods. Um, so I'd be curious as to any you'd like me to uh, compare these large data set geostatistical methods against. Thanks very much.